do a video on cloning, specifically about clonate. Um, so I'll show you this video I saw maybe like a week ago or so, and then I'll show you um, a couple other videos, like quick two minute videos, and uh, then I'll go from there to talk about cloning. But I'm, yeah, for the last video, I, the last couple videos, um, I don't even want to go into whatever that technical difficulty stuff was. I was called technical technical difficulties, but um, yeah, it should be good for this video. So let's check this out. This one, long story short, they just talk about being cool. So it's like, it's cool. Yeah, so I'm going to get a shout out to this guy's channel, the loop. Now, since you guys think we're liars, me and Kid Boo about to go live together. You're not lying. I'm a third gen. You know what I'm saying? People don't know that. Yep.
Yeah, when you're running the long line. <laughs> Can you hear me, bro? Uh, yeah. yeah. I hear you. Alright, listen, listen good, bro. I came from the phone at the Trinity Dog, and I didn't want to just tell you this on a phone call because the world needs to know, but I called your name and it was wild, bro. I, I know, I'm a clone, nigga. Bro, a I'm, clone, a, I'm a third, I'm a third, dude. Yeah. Ignore it. Fuck, yo. Yo. Yeah, I'm a, right. Seems like the problem is here. Sunlight. 
uh, you uh, drive cars and like stuff like that that again block out sunlight and like pollution. Um, basically, like a lot of the pollution that's in the atmosphere can reflect the sunlight out. Like basically creating an environment for something that doesn't like the sun, like reptiles, for example. Like they, a lot of them sunbathe, but in a way they're, they're cold blooded, so they can't take too much heat. So there's like a lot of um, and not even coming at European part, but obviously, you know, they can't really take much of the sun either. But at the end of the day, um, that's like a lot of the real, uh, reasons why, you know, the society we're in is like the way it is, because it's been basically terraformed to, um, you know, not use, to not have like high energy and things like that. Like, it, 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 it's hard to sustain yourself if you can't really take a certain amount of like energy or heat or sunlight or whatever you want to call it, basically heat, um, then you're going to put yourself in, you're going to create an environment where you don't need any of that, right? So when you think about all that, right, and then you think about the, like, once you get to a level where you can, let's say you can terraform a planet or whatever to your, to your desires to make it like, um, suitable for you to thrive instead of survive. Now you can thrive in the environment. After that, what's the next step? It's basically to, um, I don't want to really want to use these words, but replenish the planet or to fill the planet with your offspring and like to colonize. It's basically to colonize. So once you colonize, what's the next step after that? After you make colonies, it's basically to, it, it, like for uh, especially a society that's about technological advancement, it's basically to, um, again, how do I word this? To essentially achieve immortality but it's basically to advance and eventually after um like uh in the in the terms of what these uh like basically the society and like what the mainstream society and things seem as like an advancement because they're not really tapped into spirituality or dreaming or um the soul or anything like that their version of um advancement is immortality in the conscious realm like basically never losing your consciousness and like um, but like when I say never losing your consciousness, I mean, basically just like, you know, like the concept of immortality that most people think of, like just never dying. Right. So now once you get to the level of immortality though, like in just hypothetically, let's say we somehow like we're some elite people and we achieve immortality. What's the next step after that? That would essentially be to have population control because you can't just have everyone being immortal. You can have like 10 billion immortal people running around, you know, like there's not enough resources, especially if you want to live in like an extremely advanced way you know so like uh because of how much because when you really think about it like when you when you have to extract resources from the planet and all these types of things you can only take so many so much resources from the planet like you start to the planet has like a karmic effect where let's say um you take away all the trees right and trees are the natural carbon filters of the planet they're the natural filters of pollution like you breathe out carbon dioxide and you carbon dioxide like let's say like you're in a garage and you're in a car and then it fills up with carbon monoxide carbon monoxide can kill you right and it's just the only difference between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide is the one less oxygen molecule so basically low oxygen quality and high carbon quality is it could kill you it's fatal to like to humans and things like that but things like trees take in carbon dioxide and carbon pollution right and convert it into oxygen for us to breathe. They're the natural carbon filters. But then when you see in China and all these places, like with these giant towers of like carbon filters and like um, air, air, because like, you know how the air is terrible in like China, India and all these kind of places, right? So when you see all these like um, giant towers that they're building to filter the air pollution, that's good for a short term, if like they're using that for a means to an end. But in the long term, the real way to beat all that is to plant more trees but planting trees takes a long time right so like let's say you have to wait like there's some trees that are hundreds thousands of years old right like that that are on the planet as of right now right so when you think about that you have to value the life of something that's that old right because if you cut it down it takes like one second to cut it down but it takes hundreds of years for it to grow to a certain size and people don't have time for that right we need sh more short-term solutions for a lot of the problems well, not we, I guess, the people that are causing these problems, though, but and essentially we're all on this planet, so we do need long-term solutions. So this is what I'm saying about the, the planet eventually takes karmic action to to rebalance itself to its natural state. It's like from being sick to it, it, it cleanses itself, right? So 
to do that though it has to also like grow a bunch of new healthy cells and all this type of stuff right and the trees and like all the plants and stuff like that is essentially the nervous system of the planet and i explained that in the uh was it the fractal video or the video i did before that uh yeah in the fractals video i, I explained it in that video like i showed like how like the neurons in your body are essentially the same as trees and like the nervous system in your body and just based off of that this principle of correspondence you can tell that the planet's nervous system because um it's proven that all plants and trees like and stuff like that they pretty much talk to each they basically talk to each other and communicate with each other based off of like the roots intertangling and just also um local like forms of communication like they they communicate with each other so it's it works like a nervous system and it works as the nervous system of the planet so these um and to send information around just the same way as your neurons do so when you destroy the natural again and that's part of this terraforming to get rid of the nature part of the planet but when you when you think about that right and how long it takes for it to regrow these trees and like basically the nervous system and it's like they're basically like killing the nervous system right so then when you think about like other resources like oil right the oil of the planet you can look at it as like it's like the blood and the blood it takes a little bit of time for blood to be produced too like especially oil it takes a bit for oil to be produced in the planet when you think about the the um like the gold and the crystals and things like that gold takes a hunt i think like a hundred million years for it to mature to the state where you can actually use it and then you have to refine it right but um before the refining process like it takes a hundred years to mature it to even be usable and then crystals as well like they take hundreds of millions of years some of them like it it, it depends on what crystal it is so if the planet takes hundreds of millions of years to create these resources and then you're taking it out and building cell phones and shit like that for it right you're you're basically you're, you're the when you understand like the law of correspondence and things like that or not correspondence sorry the law of um what is it cause and effect or like just basically how everything's interconnected because it's a circle if if you go to the extreme on one side eventually it's going to go full circle because it's literally connected to each other and something extreme is going to have to happen to balance it out so that it can replenish itself right so when you look at all that type of stuff like we don't have like when you look at all the stuff we have on the planet they're called finite resources because we can't really um like they're finite like you can't they're not like they're not infinite if they're infinite we could just you know take shit as much as we want and we never have to worry but it's finite because it has life and it all has life and it grows and you, that's why so-called primitive cultures understand the the essence to everything that really is on the planet and they basically work with like the how how everything is alive and the spirit of all these things and respect it to that level right because it's like um it's harmonizing to the actual environment instead of what you know the mainstream society is doing so when you look at this whole anunnaki versus netaru thing which i just explained in pretty much detail which i probably will do a spiritual warfare the part three and really explain it but still anunnaki basically look at it as like this super advanced just look at it in the sense of like the super advanced society that's basically murking like taking everything is basically that anunnaki principle and then the netaru are basically the ones that the spirits that work with the essence of the planet and things like that so just look at it in that principle so when you have like a level of immortality what would happen what will happen is like when you get to immortality that step when i was explaining um what i was explaining before i just kind of went into the whole tree and like nature stuff but that was um so you'll understand what i mean by this so when it gets to the immortality level now you have to have a level of population control when it comes to population control like you basically have to have um uh, how do I even put this, like, tryouts, <laughs> that's the easiest way to put it, so, like, you have to see, you have tryouts to see who will make, you could say, the team of, I don't know, a mortal team, <laughs> if you want to say, like, the high, the freaking, the senior football team is, like, the immortals or some shit, like, if you want to look at it like that, the, they're, the, you have to try out for the team for immortals, basically, and to do that, like, look at, like, the simulated, whatever you want to call it, the matrix, the simulated reality, whatever you want, people want to call this, reality we currently live in as tryouts to make this so-called like if you want to say like this team of immortals if you want to call it that and it's based on how um it's based off of the finite resources and things like that so basically if you can get yourself to a certain level of wealth um because i think even alex jones talked about a lot of this too but um the whole breakaway the whole breakaway civilization concept right like how there's a breakaway civilization for elites and for all for these people right so 
to make to even be like to even be part of the break this breakaway civilization you're gonna have to you know make the team essentially so to make the team you're gonna have to get yourself to a certain level of wealth whether it be in sports music art um acting science like be a like you basically have to be someone that has enough importance to the society to actually like be an actual individual out of the society and at the same time contribute to the, like as a cooperative like to the community as a whole you gotta be able to commute um basically uh provide something to the community as well so you gotta be on a certain level now with that now when it comes to all that and you think about all that kind of stuff now when you look at like all the people who die like um and you don't think they like you think it was like set up and like you see all these like freemasonic um numbers and things like that connected to it man i should really just explain this all in the spiritual warfare th part three video which i will but um i should have done that video first and i did this so i don't have to explain all this twice but when you look at like um uh freemasonic like if you literally look up a freemasonic ritual a lot of them they're either like the people dressed in like robes and like weird masks and stuff like that and they're dancing and doing all this weird shit or there's the ones where like um they're doing they're doing like weird forms of like drama plays like when you see like a drama like an actual like play on stage right not, not like a movie but like a drama that counts too a movie counts too but like a drama right they're essentially acting roles in certain energies so that they can basically act out certain energies to basically trick to trick nature basically in a like not like the planet but like the universe in a way so that um it there's like a correspondence where you could say they think basically they think like um like where they what was that? that was a weird ass noise Okay, that was weird. But basically, like, a whole... They're trying to... They're trying to basically... Okay, you know when you play a role in the movie and you you um, you um act out a character? That's basically, like, an energy that's coming, you could say, from the universe or galaxy or whatever. Now, when you play out that role on the planet, like, when it comes onto the planet, like, it has to play out that role. And if it doesn't, there's basically, like, a... You can almost say, like, an alarm. Like, there's, like, a fail-safe. Like, like, it has to play out, so... A lot of times, if they can harness that energy and play out whatever it is, then it's like they can they can siphon energy in a way with a lot of these uh, rituals that are be playing out. So when you see a lot of these people dying and things like that, it's like uh, parts of the tryouts you can say. And this is just a way to look at things. Like you could say like someone who is like famous and they died in a certain type of way, and then they make the masses feel a certain type of way. They're showing that they can like, well, excuse me, they can orchestrate larger ceremonies and larger rituals and things like that so it's like a sense where they can um uh this has to do with tahuti in the school of tahuti and one of the mystery schools but essentially they're showing that they can play out a certain role and within that playing that role they um they be and if they depending on how well it like a plays out they can say they um just completed a task and basically won the um uh, i don't know won the game like won over the masses like they um uh, they successfully tricked like if they tricked the people on the planet then that means they would trick like the universal energies and things like that so it's just there's like a, a lot of correspondence and understanding with a lot of these things so it's it's basically seeing who will take part into future roles and actually be allowed to get resources when they become finite and be a part of a different kind of civilization so when you look at these like um clones and things like that the only reason that they would exist is to either basically play out the person's role because they're doing something else and they're not here and they're doing something else and if they die and all these types of things it doesn't matter because it was essentially a clone right it wasn't the original person so it still holds the energy but it's not really like it's kind of like a deception you know and it's like uh when you see like pulling a houdini like uh how he faked his death people think he fakes his faked his death or like tupac like just a bunch of people out here it kind of has to do with um sending your spirit into a different vessel if you want to say that and then rising back up again and it's kind of like a mockery of um um basically christ in a way it's basically like a mockery of that in a sense so it 
it, it's it's playing out certain satanic principles essentially and uh, you can look at it in multiple different ways but essentially that's what the cloning is really like when you really want to get into it like that's really the only reason you would have a clone like just to do stuff for you because you're not there to do it or because like maybe i don't know you're sending it to like some do something dangerous that you wouldn't want to do right so when i look at clones i'm like why is there clones you know like why would you really just need a why would you need a clone is it because like i don't know your kid died and then um you you want a clone because you can't bear the thought of being without your kid or i don't know like it, when you look at it on mundane levels like that it's just it defeats the purpose of like because you know like elites and like the way the world works is just mainly for profit so that's not really they're not going to just bank on people's emotional ties for profit like that too much like that's not really the most uh lucrative business like it's more of it's more for i don't really want to put it like this but more for evil purposes at the end of the day like and um because you can't just give immortality to everybody once you have immortality you can't take it away from someone like unless you put like a some kind of like i don't know fatal disease into a person or some like like just something that basically is like uh if you buy a new iphone and it goes bad in two years like type of thing like planned obsolescence like basically where the you you get this immortal thing but like you have to keep coming back for like a new update or you'll be screwed so it keeps you subservient to the group you know it keeps you under the role of the group because then you could become your own group and all this other shit so cloning is like a really deep topic which i guess i'm going to have to do the spiritual war for part 3 video maybe today and then i'll just get into that and talk about it more cuz i just want to get into this cloning stuff so so i explained enough so you guys don't understand what i'm getting at though with it so yeah again canadian based which kind of sucks cuz i'm a canada but I don't even know what type of shit. like there must be crazy shit going on here if we have freaking cloning organizations here but Canada's pretty underlooked at um yeah so can Canadian based um human cloning organization founded in 1997 but I think he got the idea of it before then it was building off of it it has philosophical ties with realism which sees cloning as the first step of immortality um December 27 2002 the chief executor this chick claimed that a baby clone named Eve was born and this was in Israel i think because um again it was exactly what i explained about like a parent losing their kid or something and they cloned the kid. like it was basically trying to look at it for like the humanitarian purposes and there's a Arnold Schwarzenegger movie you know, maybe i'll i'll just find it real quick no it's still not real world okay Schwarzenegger clone Maybe it's just called Clone. Yeah, the sixth day. Check out this movie. That's literally, basically, like it talks about the sixth day of the Bible. That's why it's talking about. Like it doesn't talk about it. It talks about it like for like one second in the movie, but that's why it's called the sixth day. So, basically, the first clone that was made, um, because on the sixth day of creation, God created humans, right? So it's called the sixth day clause in the movie where you can't create humans, like clone humans by the government but then you can um cl- you can clone like animals and shit like that but the first thing they do in the movie was they clone a kid for um a well one of the first things they clone a kid for the uh for a family who the who the kid died and they couldn't bear the thought of like not being without their child and whatever right and they were doing it for like so like in you know quote, air quotations like humanitarian purposes right but uh but the but because they like they saw the implications of what it would be like right they cl- created the 6 day clause where you can or the 6 day act where you can't create clones right and because of that they um they ban it but then in secret like these rich people are having clones which is all day they're having clones and stuff like that and then when they want someone killed and they do stuff they need someone killed and all these type of things and they like they basically will kill someone and clone them and then put them back and put the clone in there and act like um uh nothing happened so Arnold Schwarzenegger basically just walks home to his wife kissing him on his birthday like for a birthday party even though it's not him and it's like he it's like a clone of him and just yeah watch the movie you'll you'll see what i mean so they basically talked about a lot of the stuff i <laughs> i just mentioned in depth in that movie so i got like 20 seconds here but yeah Eve and obviously they named it Eve for a freaking reason <laughs> but uh media cover cake claims that the the media coverage of the claims sparked serious criticism and ethical debate that lasted more than a year so the exact same shit in the movie uh Florida attorney um 
Bernard Siegel tried to appoint a special guardian for and threatened to sue Clonade because he was afraid that the child might be treated like a lab rat. Might. And then there's also a movie called Species, and they basically clone a alien from this... These are all great, crazy movies to check out. There's actually four movies in the Species thing, but you can just watch one and you'll figure out the... the you'll, you'll get what it all, it's all about. But they basically clone an alien into, like, a human body, and it's like this alien-human hybrid, but they name it Eve. There's a point of it, so there's, there's a reason why they use this name a lot, but... Um, they try to appoint a special guardian, guardian for Eve, so they did it. This Florida attorney, attorney tried to appoint a special guardian for Eve and threatened to sue Clone A because he was afraid that the child might be treated like a lab rat. Like, they did it. <laughs> they cloned someone. I guess in Canada, and then sent it to Israel or something like that, or did it in Israel. But they take genes of the person and then in vitro fertilize the, it in a Petri dish and all this shit, and, like, it's a Petri dish baby, but... Siegel, and it'd be weird to be one of those kids, like, I don't even, <laughs> that's a whole other conversation, but Siegel, who heard the company's actual name was not Clone, Clone Aid, decided that the Clone Aid project was a sham. It, was it? Or why did he, like, he heard that, like, he didn't, stu like, it's just that wording and all that just seems it's suspect, you know? But they also, um, I think they wouldn't let the baby and the mother be tested, like, for DNA testing on that. So, like, that, there's, like, a possibility that it was fake on that. But as you go into this, there's more into it. So there's Biofusion Tech as a subsidiary, which is kind of important to know. But uh, I won't even go over that in this video, <laughs> that part. But um, Bio... Bio... Uh, bioethics Claire Alto condemned clone aid for premature human experimentation and noted the high c incidence of malformations of thousands of fetal deaths in animal cloning. So, yeah, this magazine in 1997 was starting a company to fund the research and developing a clone cloning, so this is just how the cloning the company started. The alarmed by uh, ethicists who were opposed to much plans to such plans, they warned lawmakers against failing to regulate human cloning. At the time, European countries such as Britain had banned human cloning, but the United States had merely a uh, moratorium. The use of federal funds for cloning, human cloning research. Okay, then. Um, oh, a law. Okay. They just had a law against it, but it wasn't banned, so you can get around that. U.S. President Bill Clinton requested that private companies pass their own laws. Um, Claude Vor, Vor, Vorlohon, whatever, some, maybe German or something. Probably Swedish. This is probably a Swedish accent. These, sound, these people sound Swedish, but uh, was opposed to this move and didn't. Either way, Swedish or German, it's whatever. Opposed to this move and denied that the cl technology we used that uh, that used to clone was inherently dangerous, so they just don't believe it's dangerous. And then the headquarters is in Las Vegas, um, in 1998, and they didn't have enough uh, didn't have enough funds to clone. On so basically they. Uh, they said that a cloning service would cost two hundred thousand. Texas A&M said it would be $2.3 million uh, to clone a dog. And there's also already been Dolly the Sheep that's been, I think Dolly the Sheep's been already cloned, right? And that was like a long time ago, right? And the fact we're knowing this in the mainstream means there's a lot more going on. So mainstream scientists said that it was unlikely that clone A would be able to clone anything in the near future. Okay. But although the project's ultimate objective was human cloning, uh, both they or whatever said that human pet cloning would help finance the operation. So that's exactly what the movie was about. They they clone animals and stuff like that, but they're like they support and air quotations don't clone, uh, clone humans. You know, <laughs> it's just some bullshit. But in 1997, again this this not, this was in May. Now this is in June. So I guess like two weeks later. Stated that its intentions to offer homosexual and infer and or infer again this is like a humanitarian perspective in their in their eyes right so to give hom homosexuals or infertile couples the chance to genetically identically have a genetically identical clone and take a step forward um, toward immortality according to an internet announcement the Raylan leader 
and a group of investors founded a company in the Bahamas called Valiant Venture Ltd., whose mission, whose project mission was named Clone Age. So just because of that, okay, wait, Valiant Venture is ex expected to have one million potential company customers. And there's also a movie called The Island that you can watch. So if you want a bunch of movies on cloning, there, there you go. So this guy at the beginning, Bernard Siegel, said that it's a sham because it's just called Valiant Venture Ltd. But he didn't say if they like work on um, different tasks other than human cloning, but it clearly says, uh, and it says predecessor, so it came out of Valiant Venture, but it clearly says they're in the biotechnology industry, so. Um, so in Montreal, they held a meeting in, 2000, in, in September 21st, 2001, um, that a wealthy American company was willing to fund the project. The first pending clone um, was a 10 month old, at the time was a couple's 10 month old girl who died due to a medical mistake. So yeah, bad medical industry, we're being humanitarians again, type of we're ethical people bullshit. He said the company was willing to pay 500,000, um, but the wife was not willing to be <coughs> the surrogate mother. Uh, a fertility specialist at Stanford said that they were providing false hope. The child was not going to be the same. And that's Claire Chick again revealed the four, the roles of the a four scientists says, um, she says were involved a biochemist, a geneticist, a few, cell fusion expert, and a French medical doctor, but without really revealing their identity, she did not identify the wealthy American couple, of course. Which again, this is pretty much the exact same as a freaking six day movie. So the fact that it's like a movie in real life happening right in front of you, it's kind of ridiculous. So. Um, So yeah, uh, let's see, respond. I don't really want to go too deep on this. I want to go into the realism part because I don't want to make this too long, but um, basically cloning a human being would not be difficult. According to this physiologist, um, pe many people donate their eggs to offer booths for implantation of clone embryos. A molecular biologist from Princeton noted the advantages <laughs> that Raelians had, which is again, the, they call people who believe in the religion Raelians had a pro-cloning religious group and finding willing, willing surrogates, so this guy's from Princeton, a biotechnology company called Advanced Cell uh, Technology of Cloned Human Embryo Cells for Medical Purposes, and its CEO said that the director, the directions for cloning a human were available in public, public, published scientific literature, which I bet you I could find, because it's probably, like, I guarantee you I could find it. It's not in this video, because it would take me a while, but I don't, I, I believe this guy on that, <laughs> so... Experts, because we learned in, in in my program too, and Kinesis when I was um, before I left, that like Dolly the sheep and other things have been cloned already, and this was like a long time ago. And they even stated the fact that this was a long time ago. So, yeah. But experts knowledgeable of the scientific advances in the field have noted that human reproductive chemistry is better understood than that of most animals. So if they can do it in animals, and they, they understand human reproductive chemistry better than in animals, so it just tells you even more. For this reason, they thought that, that a higher rate of success was possible in human cloning compared with animal cloning, and they've already done animal cloning. So, oh, her name was Bridget, not Claire. No, Claire was the other one. But anticipated that the work could begin on the preserved cells as soon as October. So this is a crazy year, I guess. <laughs> well, it was crazy three years, 1997, or four years to 2001. Um, there was no evidence that Clonate had medical knowledge necessary for its success. There was no evidence Clonate a claim was more than a publicity stunt. However, uh, in fact, all claims of Clonate cloning are not legitimate as there have not been any verification of evidence that shows successful clones been made of late as of late 2018. Well, maybe because if you showed everyone you made a clone, they would kill it for... <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so many reasons you can't say that... <laughs> there's so many reasons you can't show that. <laughs> There's like too many reasons, but I guess the FDA inspected Clonade's lab in West Virginia. Um, is inside a rented room, but um, because apparently because Clonade's in Vancouver, so I don't know, but yeah, so I guess in 2001 it was in the high school. Um, it was inadequate apparently. Um. Yeah, this sounds pretty inadequate. They were taking the work of a, the work the work of a graduate student and extracting ovum from cow ovaries in a slaughterhouse. The FDA said the equipment in the lab was state of the art, 
what the hell? <laughs> and had been bought by Mark Hunt, a former state legislator of West Virginia. Who? Yeah, but that's what the FDA said, that a former state West Virginia le- legislator, um, former state legislator of West Virginia, Mark Hunt, who wanted to clone his 10-month-old son, funded the equipment that was in there. It was state-of-the-art. And uh, his 10-month-old son, Andrew, died in 1999 from congenital heart disease. That's literally what this... I'm telling you, watch this movie The Sixth Day, if you haven't seen it. Following an investigation of the West Virginia lab, Mark Hunt made an agreement with the FDA to OCI to not clone his dead son without uh, within the United States. So this is why they did it in Israel and shit like that, because... Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, there's too much problems with that in America, but, uh, which I, I would think there's more problems with that in Canada, so I don't even know how the ship's in Vancouver, but, uh, let's see. So, Bridget said that, because I'm not going to pronounce that anymore, Bridget said that a woman would be pregnant with a clone fetus in April, in 2001, March. Um, she said that it would be done in April, so that she said that, um, cells that have reached the blastocyte stage... Oh, one sec. Uh, okay, where was that? So. Yeah, so they said that this is basically the beginning of um, fertilization. Like, um, like after fertilization, this is the beginning of um, the growth part of, like, the baby, essentially. It's not really a baby yet, you know, at all. It's just, like, it's growing. So. Yeah, so you didn't want to speak about it specifically, though. And then, um, yeah, they moved it outside of the States in, in that November, accordingly. Like, well, that's when they claimed they moved it out of the States. Um, so they beat advanced cell technology to, to do it. Um, CNN cannot confirm it. They are one and the same, <laughs> but in the lack of evidence for cloning, authorities remain skeptical. Yeah, I don't, I don't really care because it's kind of obvious, but because it gets way more obvious with how much funding they've gotten. So, um, alleged baby Eve. So they delivered the baby through C-section in 2002 in December. Um, they announced it in Hollywood, of course, in Hollywood. Um, it was somewhere outside the U.S., but they claim it was actually done, they said it was done in Israel. Um, they did not give DNA samples, and they would not, um, for confirmation at the press conference, they didn't want to do that, which I could understand, because you can, because you can get around laws without actually proving it, but still, like, they're proving it, but not proving it, like, they're, it's like a smart way to do it. It could be a sham, but really it's a smart way to do it. So, but this gets way deeper, so... Um, but yeah, she she announced it before the genetic testing. So yeah, they announced it without showing the results. But yeah, you get arrested if you show the results on that. <laughs> so you could claim that it's just like a fake thing if people even try to arrest you on it because it's not even legal, right? So. Korean prosecutor, yeah, this was a funny thing. Korean prosecutors raided the Korean branch, and then the 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 guy who runs the whole thing wasn't allowed into Korea, and he was calling it a what was he calling it? He was calling it a man. He was calling it something so ridiculous, like so ridiculous. He he was claiming some ridiculous ass shit about that he can't do this in Korea. He was trying to make it like he was such a victim. But in the process, the prosecutors removed records from homes and offices because Koreans aren't messing with this shit, I guess while barring two representatives of biofusion tech from leaving the country. So, <laughs> just, they put him on freaking, they put him on probate. They basically put him on um, country arrest, like they couldn't leave. An official company statement revealed that three Korean war- women applied to become surrogate mothers. Officials of biofusion tech told the prosecutors that 10 Korean wa- women wanted to clone themselves and filled out applications. Okay, so... Yeah, the FDA stated its intention to investigate clonate to see if they've done anything illegal. This is why you, you can't really prove it. <laughs> because I feel like this is going on. But they contended that the, its regula- that its regulations for basically cloning without prior agency permission, how you can do it with permission, <laughs> apparently legally. 
However, some members of the con of Congress believe that the jurisdiction of the, of the FDA cloning matters was shaky and decided to push Congress to explicitly ban human cloning. So why do you think they have to act the way they act and also move to Israel and Canada and such? But which I swear it's more illegal to do this in Canada than anywhere else. But no in Canada is some sort of they would legalize it if people make it ethical enough. Um, George Bush said it was deeply troubling to most Americans. Most. Um, yeah, either way, I'm going to skip all this part now. Because um, I want to go into realism and not spend a lot of time on this. So, maybe I'll just go to this part real quick. But The 20 imp more implantations of human clones were on, it, on the way after the which 10 which after after the first 10 which happened the first year. So what, you're at 30 now? <laughs> so it was like decades ago. She said that the other companies have used cloning procedures to uh, the different species that lead to a high to a high failure rate. What are they creating? They're creating some and that's a little bit of a crazy answer, right? Bridget argued that the failed attempt at human cloning would it be like those in vitro fertilization where early miscarriages occurred more frequently than abortions. Um, the deformities were detected in the beach, someone would abort her. So, a Dutch lesbian couple in the Netherlands. Um, okay, this Dutch chick apparently did it. <laughs> they forbade cloning, but not the birth of baby clones. You know what I'm saying about this legislation stuff? If you know how to use words, you can get around a lot of stuff, but it's just deception and not lying. It's different. Um, Ten implantations, two birds. So, UK Roslyn Institute is like the bullshit. Um, Japan, they're saying, this chick is saying that she did it. This politician or the senator or whatever, he was um, he invested half a million into them before it was shut down. But you know they obviously kept the equipment and stuff. They proposed a, one on they proposed a lab on the Brazilian island on Brazilian island for creating next generation of clone babies. They said five babies were born between 2002 and 2003, and four of which and four February 2003, which had developed normally. just a weird sentence, but still. As you can see, there's one in Australia, South Korea, Koreans are not with that shit right away, but in 2004 they're at 13, yeah, Kid Boo claimed that he was a human clone produced by Clonade, which is how people hear about this company. From I don't think anyone gives a damn, and they don't really look into it, they're like, oh, like, I don't know, they just do a bunch of stupid stuff that people that are younger, they're like, oh, it's just like a trolling thing, and da da da, but then this company is like extremely real. Like, oh, this is commonly perceived as a publicity stunt, and they have references for Kid Boot, like, oh my god. <laughs> try to put the skepticism in there, okay. At the end of the day, when you get into this religion, this is where it gets real next. And um, it's funny because a lot of 
<laughs> a lot of melanated people basically believe in this without even knowing they believe in this, <laughs> which I kind of find funny as hell. So, um, it's funny because it shows you a lot. It's just, it's just, uh, it's like where people, you, you don't even know who's feeding you information, you know, for a lot of the people that believe in similar things. I'm going to show one thing real quick. So, so you, can search, you can search realism or clone aid, um, and you'll find this video. So this is a, a spokesman for realism, and again, I guess, please, I'm making no money off of me and my videos, right? But, AP Archive, and check out the original, you know, called Spokesman Script, this is a blue piece of claim that's going to be born in Israel, and this is about you, so you, again, I'll right, go to this. YouTube page and two other, you know, and other people that posted it, but now, the reason I show, I'm showing this video is just because when I talk about, like, <laughs> colonization and all this type of other shit from before, oh, excuse me, yeah, if I talk about all this type of stuff, just look at this guy, I don't even have to explain anything, like, I don't even play with sound because he's speaking, like, Hebrew or something like that, but this guy even the eyes were his teeth and his eyes, it just, the eyes almost look like it's changing color and stuff, they just, they don't even look, this stuff just does not look natural. You can hear what the sound too if you want, but. Usually people with long turtlenecks, like, you don't trust them because, I don't know, these long necks are, some people have freakishly long necks, and I know there's a lot of Africans, like, even I have a few some long ones, but. Like, a lot of Africans who want to next, but this is like something else. Like, this guy just doesn't look that natural. Of a person. Like, race aside and all that kind of stuff. His eyes just have a weird, like, hue to them. And, like, if you remember the video I just showed you on Twitter, I don't know if I can pull that back up again. I'm gonna have to just replay this one more time. <laughs> and I'm not playing the sound this time. This is artificial intelligence. So, you don't talk about synthetic humanoids, we talk about artificial humanoids. So, people that are basically completely inorganic, inorganic humanoids, if you want to call it like that. Like something like this, basically, just like a. Just not even a cyborg, it's like a robot AI. And again, there's another movie about this on Netflix. Uh, what's it called? I feel like I'll figure it out by the end of the video. I forget what it's called, but... And there's more than just, you know, the cloning company I'm showing you, but like, there's companies on this stuff. Now, um, there's these like inorganic humans, basically, inorganic humanoids, which are um, people freaking just frozen and frozen in light, and they have like a weird hue to them, like regardless of what, like, they just have a weird, keep the name Maya, right? but they just have a weird hue to them, and like the eyes, it just reminds me of, they look kind of like animated, these guys, you know what I mean, and like, the hue to their eyes just reminds me of the guy we were just watching on the video, that's what I mean, like in the teeth and stuff, like, I don't even know how to really put this into the correct words, I usually find the right words, but I mean, just you know, fitness trainer and she's just a friend <laughs> okay, but yeah I'll, I'll figure out the movie in a second um, by the end of this video at least. actually here let me just look real quick because you already get the point of this video I'll figure this out real quick yeah, the movie's called I Am Mother and I just, again, I just, if you want to do these, just go to the phone right there. Like, just do this, 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 just do this,
inorganic human, right? Um, the passing test. I forget what the scientific test is called, but it is a passing test. You can put them with a, a group of people and for however long, and they can never tell the difference whether it's human or not. And that's how it passes the test. It's a passing test. You know? And that's basically what that is. You know, you can watch the rest of the day, so it's yeah, so just that concept in the back of the brain, that gives you some more knowledge of the stuff out there. Probably means that, like, no one noticed in the past, you know, a lot of these past the past, you know? But, basically, these are the people that started Clone Age. So Clone Age didn't, so this started in 1974, this religion, and these are the guys, they basically moved over to Clone Age. So now, Raelin, Raelian, or whatever, I don't even know how to pronounce that, so I'm just going to call it Raelian, 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 so, you know, you see the word raw and out in there for a reason. Now, there's a UFO religion that was founded in 19... <laughs> UFO religion, which is a whole section of so Scientology, right? And that was founded in 1974 by Claude Vor... Vor... Like, some German or Swedish dude. Now known as Rail... Rail. Now, the Raelian movement uh, teaches that life on Earth was scientifically created by a species of extraterrestrial human scientists, except the, which they call the Elohim. Members of this species appeared human when having personal contacts with the descendants of the humans that they made. I'm going to reread that. Members of this species appeared human when having personal, and they're basically taking contact with the Bible. This is why they said, make, we'll make, we, we will make them in the likeness of us. And there's people taking contact with the Bible and twisting it, right? Members of the species appeared human when having personal contact with the descendants of the humans that they made. So that's how they can have contact with us. We can't even tell the difference. They purposely misinformed early huma humanity that they were angels, cherubim, or gods, prophets, or messengers of the Elohim, who Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, and others. So I'm guessing they include Moses, Aaron, and all these guys. But the founder of realism believes that he, he, he received the final message of the Elohim, and that his purpose that its purpose is to reform the world by Elohim, and that humans become aware and peaceful enough. They wish to be welcomed by them. So it's uh, one of those cults that welcome aliens and then probably end, probably at the end of it will tell you that you have to die to go onto the mothership and then there's a mass suicide cult, you know, which exists, that, which has happened multiple times already, right? But <laughs> so, and not to go on people who believe in like aliens coming down and like put a lot of proofs out there. Shout out to, you know, those guys who've been putting out proofs and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm, I'm talking about these cults that <laughs> are like just. You know, like, like they'll, they'll get the whole group to kill themselves, and then they don't even die, and then they just basically were like, it was a giant hustle, and now they're rich, and they're like missing and shit like that, right? But and they do it in a country where they can't get convicted of these things, and yeah. But the Raelian Church has a quasi-clerical structure of seven levels, so probably to them it's like the seven heavens, you know. But joining the movement requires an official apostasy from other religions. Raelian ethics includes striving for world peace, and then here's their ethical bullshit at the front. Raelian ethics includes striving for world peace, sharing, democracy, and nonviolence. The found, Rail founded Clone Age, Clone Aid, based in Canada, Vancouver specifically, in 1997, but then handed it over to a Raelian bishop, Bridget, who we've been talking about the whole time, even though they're basically still running. She's just the front. Maybe she's a clone that's running it. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know anything about this woman, really, but. I feel like I should, but in 2002, the company said that an American woman underwent a standard point, so ease, we're just going to skip over that, and if you believe, like, we're going to skip over that, but the mainstream media to, um, nonetheless attracted national authorities and the mainstream media to look further into the cult, into the cult. Now, yeah, we can't skip over this, <laughs> this part right here, but they claim that the swastika is a symbol of peace, which halted Raelian the request for territory in, uh, in Israel, so they're trying to so they have a Star of David with a swastika in the middle of it, and they also have like a one a version where it's like a vortex kind of looking like thing inside of the inside of the Star of David. So they're trying to claim that they have direct connection with Elohim that you know is obviously related to Israel. So they're trying to claim like territory in Israel, some bullshit, and later Lebanon for establishing an embassy for extraterrestrials. Well, excuse me, which they did build. I don't know where they built it. I forget, but they did build it. Um, yeah, the symbol, in 1991 and 2007, this symbol, oh yeah, the, the vortexing symbol we saw it in the video with the guy earlier, he was wearing it on his necklace, but, um, 
Between, yeah, 1991 and 2007, the symbol is often replaced by a variant star and a swirl symbol in an attempt to improve public relations, particularly with Israel. Well, yeah, how do you put a swastika in the middle? You're going to put a swastika in the middle of the star, David. And then the guy who was repping this, even though I know how the history between the swastika and, like, India and Hinduism, Buddha, or Buddhism, I mean, and, um, it's even on the churches of Lali Bell in Ethiopia, so I get the deep history of it, but that's not what I'm talking about. But how are you going to get Hitler, who's just promoting his Aryan race, killing Jews, and then put the two symbols of the Jew and <laughs> the swastika together, and then try to go to Israel, claiming land, and then put basically the the symbol of of their Holocaust, and then on your logo, and ask to share share a space with them? Like that is just beyond, like retarded like i don't even um, we're in a living we're living in a world where i can't even say shit like that but we're like <laughs> that's just beyond like just stupid that's just plain plain stupid like you can't <laughs> that'd be like if you tried to live with a like you moved in with like a black person and you just ha were wearing a kkk outfit like it's just you can't do shit like that like the it's just beyond stupid so then you, this, the point i say that is to show you how like lost they are like they're not down to earth at all like they're not realistic at all like they they went in thinking this was a good idea and then realized the the backlash so they changed it to this world <laughs> these people are not in their right mind you know so <laughs> that <laughs> i don't know that's just one of the most ridiculous things i've ever freaking heard but uh let's see that's a fucking bad extraterrestrial. He has to human cloning. Yeah, Switzerland. Okay. These these people are Swedish. So these are these are the exact <laughs> they look like the Aryans that Hitler was describing and they showed up. <laughs> I don't even want to do that anymore, that's just too much. But um so yeah, they got a lot of members around the world. This is their mascot. Blue guy with blonde hair. Oh my god. Yeah, so I don't I don't even want to get into this, but it's just they got a lot of members. And Oh man, go back. They better not have it in They better not have these people in my province. But I don't know, I'm sure they do. Um, okay, this is something I want to see here. So, yeah, in 1980 to 1992, they became more global. Um, Sensual Meditation was one of their books. They even put it into different languages, like Japanese. <laughs> they do missions, like the way like you go to like a different country and build a house or something. They do missions or... Oh my god. Now they're trying to target Africa. Does it say Africa in here? Man, Africa is not gonna accept this shit. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, a lot, most of them won't at least, the majority. Like, on a, on a national level, it'll never be accepted. Um, yeah, Eve again, with Bridget and all that shit. And, um, they yeah, suggested that this is one of the first steps in achieving a much, much more important agenda. Immortality. <laughs> they just want rights to do this, so they can... Yeah, they're on some stupid shit. They say that through cloning, they can combine an accelerated growth process with some form of mind transfer, and in such, may achieve eternal life. Like, I gotta let that resonate. They say that through cloning, they can combine an accelerated growth process with some form of mind transfer and and such may achieve eternal life. I gotta show everybody something. So, in the show Naruto, I got a lot of references, whether it be books, TV shows, animes. Um, man, okay, this is not easy to spell. But, there's a... Basically, I don't want to explain the whole... Oh, man, how do I even explain this? All these guys... Oh, this, 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 I'm just gonna try that one more Shit, it's not Vykovsky. Uh, Osuki. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> this is a Naruto. 
The, o the Otsuki clan is an ancient clan originating from another world from across the galaxy, having arrived on Earth for a over a thousand years ago. So the whole premise of the show, even before, I'm not going to explain it in detail, but they basically go planet to planet, and they have these divine trees on each planet, right? And they're basically the tree of life that we have in the in the Bible, because the main bad guy of all Naruto, his name is Madara Uchiha, which is, well, he's not that guy, but he looks like that guy. And even if you look at the word Madara, Madara, now, if you look at the word Madara and you split up, you got Ra, and then this backwards is Adam. Mada is Adam, right? M-A-D-A, Mada, right? Madara. So Adam Ra, and then a tomb Ra, as you know, is a relates to Adam in the Bible, right? So the tomb Ra. So basically, he's the main bad guy. He's one of the descendants. Basically, this, this crazy chick here creates this divine tree on the planet, and the divine tree takes all of the spirit. It sucks all the energy of the people, it creates this fruit, they eat the, they go planet to planet, they eat this fruit, and they eat the fruit, they basically go immortal, and they gain crazy powers, and then each planet they go, and they eat new fruit, they get crazier and crazier powers. But eventually she had two kids with a human, these like hybrid kids, which is, you could say, it's this Anunnaki human hybrid, Nephilim or whatever, and then it was these two kids, and then from these two kids they had the kid Madara, well this guy is one clan, and then they have two different clans that split up, and these clans are basically tribes and, like that we have around the world. This is what they're trying to relate it to, so I'm probably going to do, not on this channel, I'm going to do it on a different channel, but, I'm, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it when we do the video. I'm gonna do, we're going to do a video on this show because like animes and stuff explain some deep ass shit, and I'm not going to get into it on some like it, it, I'm just going to use it as like almost like a reference to history and like to relate it to some stuff because they put some real shit in this stuff. So the point is, these are just like some albino, like they're literally like albino looking people and they just like travel world to world and they harvest the planet and then eat the, these guys are good guys even though they're the kids, but they, they go planet to planet, eat like they're like literally these people are all from different planets. They go planet to planet and they just harvest these people and then they eat the fruit and basically all the energy of the people go into this tree, they bear the fruit, they eat the fruit and then they gain powers and stuff. And they're just like evil shit. So the reason I'm showing that is because who is it? They also have this advanced technology that they bring and everyone on the planet is like aligned with nature and they got this crazy like they got like powers with nature and stuff like that. Which they call like ninjutsu, which is part of the Shinto religion and Buddhism and stuff, right? Now I think it's this chick so one of these people, she's like, I think she's in the manga, so I have to, I don't read that shit, because I think, I don't know, it, I just read it when I was reading the, the plan, like on the, the wiki. Basically, one of these girls, she, she has, there's a drone, that when she dies, the drone flies out of her, off her back, and you can detect it and all this type of shit, and then she, it, it basically downloads her consciousness onto a hard drive, and then it, um, they have a new body for her, and they put her consciousness into the new body, and that's how she can retain immortality even through death. So, like, that just reminded me of this when they say, they say through cloning, they can combine an accelerated growth process with some form of mind transfer, and such may achieve eternal life. Because when it comes to mind transfer, even if you die and then you have your consciousness stored, which is also in that six day movie, because you have to look through this like binocular type thing and it stores your consciousness and then it clones everything that you've experienced up until when you look through that thing. So you remember only up until then. So if you do shit for like a week after that, because usually they clone you right after that and then you die, right? And you just take, you just redo, like you keep going in that other body. So I'm just saying like that show even, like Naruto touches on this, like animes touch on this topic topic of Anunnaki and like, um, Elo like when people call Anunnaki Elohim, which I don't even think is true, like that correlation, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, because Anunnaki have to do with Babylonian gods, and Babylon was secondary to Kush, and that's a whole nother conversation, but at the end of the day, yeah, these people are on some, like, if you cannot see the common traits between the immortality of the even the albino part, but the immortality thing, the, um, what do you call it, the, um, the advanced technology and the harvesting the planet and terraforming the planet between all these, like, different, like, stories, and I don't know, like, how to even make this more clear on people, but, uh, so the levels to this, we got level zero, which is, of course, it goes to level, there's seven levels that only ends at level six, but 
you got a trainee, then you're an assistant organizer, then you're an organizer, then you become an assistant priest, priest or a regional guide, then you become a priest, which is a national guide or a, re a national and a regional guide, then you become a bishop, which is a continental head, so you head a continent, and then you have the other titles as well, and then, yeah, and then lastly you become the guide of guides which is obviously, and these are all pl plays on like how religion is, because religion you go from priest to bishop to pope and stuff like that, so it's obviously a play on all that type of shit, but they have a church. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, there's all four levels are different kinds of guides, all of different sizes basically, like they allocate over different like levels of like you know, from region to nation to continents to everybody, to the guide of guides, and then, or the lord of lords, and, you know, they're, they're playing on concepts, and they're just changing the words, but each bishop or priest can propose a new guide as a candidate, um, as, as long as the candidate is below a level of their own, so it's a pyramid scheme, um, <laughs> long story short, but, um, so you gotta go to annual seminars and all this other bullshit, which, obviously makes sense because you gotta be indoctrinated and their shit. And then this guy's held the highest position for three seven year terms. Oh man, this almost sounds like a dictatorship. But and Claude Vore alone or whatever it was, you know, the guy who started it. So it's obviously a cult. But <laughs> um it's mainly male. Um so she's a huge part of the, you know what, let's just click this, let's click her real quick, we got a, oh, she's French, and she's a Raelian religious leader, so she's definitely not part of the company without being a religious leader, and yeah, we're not going to even go in, I don't even care, I just need to see if she's a religious leader in the church. Um... The Order of Angels. Okay, so this is part of it. The Order of Angels <laughs> is <laughs> hyper-feminist hyper woman, basically. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fill in some words because let's just be honest. So <laughs> the initiate rites, including clear, include declaring an oath or making a contract in which one agrees to become defender of the Raelian and founder. Of, oh my God, the Order of Angels. <laughs> so you just defend them, basically. Like you make an oath to defend them. <laughs> the Order of Angels has this hierarchy of rose angels and white angels, of course. It's pure angels, right? Are six and uh, 160 women, respectively. So there's six rose angels, like the six levels, and then there's 160 white angels. Um, I wonder if black people can join. <laughs> After the human cloying announcement made the headlines, um, members of the Order not only provide a sexual pleasure for Rael, Sounds like a freaking cult, obviously, but also help donate eggs for human cloning. Oh my god. One of the most transparent movements, apparently. Holy. Instruct. Instructed. Keyword instructed. Some woman members to play a pro sex feminist role. Oh my god. God. <laughs> Rails Girls is another group of women in the movement which are against the suppression of feminine acts of pleasure including sexual intercourse with men or women what? okay so they have hyper hy like they have hyper sexualized people and then they have completely like celibate people <laughs> and then they have people who work solely in the sex industry They say there's no reason to rep pre prevent, uh, repent for performing striptease or prostitution. <laughs> you know, this is hard to read now, but the organization was set to, because this is just people really doing this shit, and it's just, oh my god. Oh my god, they were found, they were in play, in a, in a pictorial Playboy in 2004. Okay, I'm done with that part. So... <laughs> I don't even want to really read more of this stuff. Like, I, like as you can see, there's a lot on this. I'm gonna just skim over stuff. So there's cer there's a ceremony. Okay, this kind of might be important, but there's a ceremony. 
there's a baptism. There's a church. Let's just we'll just understand. There's a lot of weird rituals and shit. And oh my god, yeah, they lay water on their heads and man, this is one word off of reptilian. Like <laughs> if you put a this is or sorry, this is like two letters off of the word reptilian. I don't even need to say anymore on this. Okay, so. <laughs> They find they have an anniversary for the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Yeah, these are the most fake ass people. <laughs> October seventh, um, in which the uh, oh my goodness. So, so he's encountered the Elohim. He's been taken up into the spacecraft and had following had had the following day had meals with Jesus, Buddha, and other other past religious figures. <laughs> it's the first Sunday in April, which really is believed is the, is the date when dark-skinned ex extraterrestrials created Adam and Eve. Okay, well, at least at least they got this part. At least they got this part pretty accurate. The dark-skinned extraterrestrial. Okay. So, we could stroke our egos a little bit with this one, hey? <laughs> but... But this is also, I don't even really want to talk about it, but this is what gets into the Great White Brotherhood as well, because the Great White Brotherhood believes in, like, the whole Ascended Masters, and these are all versions of Ascended Masters, so I guarantee you this stuff is tied to the Great White Brotherhood, which, Great White Brotherhood, in a way, is, it's also tied to the Galactic Federation of late, if you know about that stuff, but I'm not going to even talk about that stuff, that's the, I don't even want it, that was just already enough information for people, but, yeah, then we got Sensual Meditation, which... I don't even know if I want to know what it is. It's probably like a, they're a weird form of tantric yoga and sex and stuff. Uh, they advocate masturbation, condoms, and birth control. Obviously, they freaking promote birth control when they're literally controlling birth. <laughs> like, through cloning and shit. But GMO nanotech technology will allow mankind to eliminate the obligation of to work in a world that in a world that embraces science and technology. Well, this is probably because they believe that they're the solution to getting back into the Garden of Eden, even though they were never a part of it. So they probably believe that. Oh my God! <laughs> they probably just believe this is how they get back into the garden or something. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff. Man, this is like a whole other. This is like a whole nother thing. There, we got Freemasonry. We got all these like, we all we got all these different camps. We got all the, <laughs> then we got like all these different titles of different people and stuff. Then we got like Freemasonry. We got like elites. We got we got these different like Illuminati like these like under orders under the Illuminati. And now we have shit like this like cloning companies and shit like this. So I don't even I'm gonna have to fit this into that pyramid somehow. Like I just gotta look into that more, but. So, like, there's, like, they mix, like, truth with weird shit in here, you know? Like, there's, like, truth, so, like, tiny little truths, and then they mix, they, they like, twist it in their own weird way. <laughs> like, they're gonna, like, twist the biblical stuff and then promote prostitution, and, like, I don't know, they just twist a lot of weird stuff. So, yeah, they have an embassy, by the way. Ah. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna skip some points. I just want to get into their. They promote like sex positive feminism, GMO food. I just want to get into their funding, and um, their embassy part. So they 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 do a bunch of marches and shit like that. And man, I don't want anti-Catholic. They're anti-Catholic. They're pro-GMO. They're anti-war, and they're anti-Catholic. So they went to Catholic schools and proposed a condom vending machine. Yo, these people are... Yo, these people are actually messed up in the head. Like, you can't just let a cat... Like, you can't go put that... You can't go put a condom vending machine in a school. Like... <laughs> they don't even go to a public school for this. They go to a Catholic school just to get freaking publicity out of this. And, like, try to cause, cause a controversy and use the controversy and, like... Yo, these people are just Satanists, I'm not gonna lie. They're probably just Satanists behind closed doors, pumping all this weird-ass shit. 
they dubbed it Operation Condom. You know, the fact that they even have money, money to do this type of shit. Like, how are they gonna believe in this, this part that I was saying right here? Where is it? Yeah, never mind. I'm not even gonna find it, but how are they gonna pump the dark skin extraterrestrial thing, right? And how, like, and all that type of stuff. And say that, like, like, kind of, like, try to like, jump on the bandwagon of, like, certain ideas with melanated people to try to just stroke your ego to get support, but then at the same time not do anything for them, but then at the same time go use their money and, and time to protest stupid-ass shit like a Catholic school. Like, I don't know, I just find that retarded. Like, I, I find this really dumb at the end of the day. Like, what church goes and protests another church? Like, you literally are called a church. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The judge did not accept the charges for the reason that the railings were not attacking the whole of the Catholic Church. How are you going to go to just... Oh my goodness, but how are you going to have a parade where you hand out Christian crosses to high school students? Oh, they invited them to burn crosses in the park. It sounds like some cake. Man, I'm telling you, this shit is just beyond suspect. Like, Yeah, enticement to hatred. Definitely. How are you going to say you believe in peace and then you go to... Oh my goodness. Topless rights of women. Okay, we get it. Like, freaking free the nipple and shit like that. And just jump on everything, every bandwagon you could possibly get on. See, do you know what I want to ask everybody who is pumping this? If extraterrestrials created you, who created the extraterrestrials? And then who created the extraterrestrials that created those extraterrestrials? And then who created those extraterrestrials? Because you have to get into a point where, like, like, it gets to a point where it just becomes a circle, and when then when you take everything too literally like that, like, that's when... That's when you're missing a lot of the points out here <laughs> about certain things, so... So, if dark-skinned extraterrestrials created dark-skinned people, and then somehow they're not even explaining how white people showed up on the scene here. And then they believe in these dark-skinned extraterrestrials, but they don't even harmonize with the dark-skinned people on the planet. <laughs> like, <laughs> this shit is just... You know, this planet is a joke. It's, it's <laughs> you can have a lot of fun with this planet. This planet is, like, actually a joke. With, like, a lot of... With, with, like, the Western world, actually. Not really this planet. The Western world is a joke, because the Eastern world's actually going through some real shit, but the Western world is going through some real... weird-ass simulated like, not real, like, just made-up things that people are just, like, I don't even know how to explain that, they're just, the Western world is dealing with some messed up shit. Um, a former bishop of the Church of the Latter, okay, a former Mormon, I guess, um, joined so he could be openly gay. So Mormons, and I was gonna say at the beginning, the way this religion sounds, when he said that, like, he was the first, like, the guy who created it is the guy who, um, be uh, be he believes that they, they were, like, they got, like, the divine intervention of the extraterrestrials and stuff like that, and, like, they're, like, the last prophets. I'm like, this sounds, like, a lot like what Joseph Smith said, the guy who started Mormonism, and then <laughs> that's what I was thinking earlier, and the fact that 8% of their people were former Mormons, it just doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Religiously mixed couples are common, especially with spouses who are Christians or okay, whatever. So let's just get into this last concept. I, they, they're dominant intellectual climate. Oh, okay, they're superior intellectually, but they're peaceful and all this other shit. Um, yeah. So Anunnaki, those who came from the sky. 
that's what Elohim means, and it's plural, and they say a lot of the stuff that a lot of people say, you know? So, mind transfer, okay, let's read this part, actually. <sighs> It's an early de de developmental stage and the belief is beliefs distance it from a dominant intellectual climate. Realism says that all life on Earth, humans included, were scientifically created by Elohim, mass members of an extraterrestrial race who appeared similar to, sm to small humans and, and so were often depicted as angels, cherubs, or, or gods. Realists who are not monotheists believe the correct historical meaning of the word Elohim is the plural sense of those who came from the sky. Belief in extraterrestrial Elohim play a central part in clothing aid offer of clothing services for homosexual and infertile couples who want a cloned child from a partner's DNA. So this is when you get into the whole part about homosexuals and trans transgenders believing that they're actually superior. Like a transgender believes that they're transcended and they're, they're like not all of them, but I'm saying some of them actually do believe this, believe that they're like the, since they're the combination of both, um, genders, even though, you know, men have an XY chromosome, but they, since they believe they're the combination of both genders, they are, even though it's scientific, even though it's not, like, biologically correct, that they're, um, they're the evolution of humankind, and they're God in a body, because God is, like, divine, and he's, he's, um, he's, like, he's both in one, but that's not really what it means by divine, it means kind of like a, it's more than, it's way more than just both in one, it doesn't mean, like, a hermaphrodite or anything like that, it just means the spirit exists within all. So it, it, it's just like a twisted concept of conflating the spirit and the flesh, which you're not supposed to do. So it's just like they're they're kind of lost, and then yeah, they just believe they're they believe they're advanced and shit. So this is where homosexuality ties to this weird UFO religion stuff and the heavy support for physicalism and the reputation of supernaturalism. So complaining and conflating the spirit and the body, but. Um, I think this is just like the concept of like phenomenon and like spiritual phenomenon and stuff. Um, so I'll couple that with the belief that mind transfer, with mind transfer, human cloning, you can implant a, a mind and personality into a, a new and disease-free body, except in that six day movie when they give you diseased bodies so they have to keep getting new bodies from them, but real, <laughs> real in, because this is like real similar to that movie, it's real wild. Realists publicly deny the existence of the ethereal soul and the soup. There we go, we don't have souls. <laughs> That's where this stuff gets real, real twisted now, hey? Now we don't have souls, hey? I guess they can speak for themselves. But they believe that humanity for many generations past will be resurrected in a scientific way. Not, so they can't reincarnate, so this is their way of reincarnating because they don't have souls. I was going to say this whole concept that they're getting into disregards the process, the, the whole thing about having an eternal soul eternal ethereal soul, you know, so it's like, that's why they can't transfer their conscious naturally with the universe, yeah, that's all, whatever. So yeah, Buddha, Muhammad, all of them, just to hear, prefer, just to prepare them for what we're at now, for, for, it was basically to prepare us for realism, <laughs> um, which was a combination of a human woman and a Elohim to create basically Nephilim, not normal people, which are a twist in the Bible. To realize this was possible because Elohim had to had advanced DNA s synthesis and genetic engineering, but how did the human woman, where did the human woman come from if they created the, oh my god, okay. The Elohim later reduced the frequent visits so that humans were largely left to progress on their own until Revelation and the final messenger to reveal, re Revelation means to reveal, uh, themselves and uh, to reveal themselves an extraterrestrial embassy, and then to become the political and economic basically leaders. Sex is a normal is a normal, natural, and healthy part of life, and, and encourage people to be true to their sexual na na natural sexuality. Well, if we didn't have all these weird forms of information you'd be giving us, I don't think anyone would be doing the weird forms of sexuality they're doing because it's not natural, but. They promote healing from damaging mes messages. <laughs> yeah, here we go. With, with the indoctrination shit, right? From strict pl uh, pur uh, puritanical belief systems and social stigmas that stifle one's na natural sexuality, of course. It's, I bet you. I bet you this means bestiality. I bet you bestiality is in here, but they just like, aren't legally allowed to say it too. But these just sound like some advanced Greeks. 
<laughs> and any legal faith. So all this shit is accepted. And any legal faith, that's why they say legal, so I bet you bestiality if it was legal. But faith and consent, well, it is legal in some places. Faith and consensual adult activity is promoted. It's part of a hot, long and healthy life because I, and this is used to attract young converts to the religion. Because places like, I don't know Sweden exactly, places around Sweden are basically, you can marry a dog. <laughs> you can marry animals in, in places in Europe. So, yeah. I'm just going to stop that part there. But Sexuality is a gift of pleasure to mankind from the Elohim. Thank you, events. <laughs> I'm done mocking these people. This is just ridiculous. I, I got a certain point. Even if you're high, like, this is ridiculous even to someone who's high. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they believe in, um, I feel like this knows, this says enough if you know about these people. Didn't he molest children? Doesn't it say in his book that you can molest children? That's creepy. Are you serious? How am I gonna Google Nest molestation? They're not gonna give me it. pretty sure in one of his books he talks about this shit. I am pretty... They were gonna give me Malachi v. York and, and the child molestation when I Google Zachariah Stitch and just, uh, Oh my god. Oh, yeah, Aleister Crowley. Okay, sorry, Aleister Crowley, not Zachariah Stitch. But I would not be... I would not be surprised if he was caught in some stuff. But a lot of these people are tied together, whether it be Zachariah, Zach, whether it be Zachariah Stitch and Aleister Crowley, a lot of these people are tied together, but at the end of the day, it's not important right now. They volunteer, they're into nanotechnology, human cloning, cloning, uh, cloning, LGBT issues. Oh, okay, they, they marry people within their church. See, here's that swirl I was talking about. It's like a swirl inside the Star of David, but... Uh, okay, they say that pedophilia is not okay. But what if, like, you clone your wife, and then she has to, you know, age 30 years to even become, like, your age or whatever, because by the time you're 30, then she's, you're, she's, uh, by the time she's 30, you're 60, then, like, are you allowed to, since it's your wife, technically, and you're already married to her, like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's whole they can create holes in their argument, like, I feel like there's ways that they're gonna go back on their word on, I don't know, I'm just saying, I feel like there's, there is, um, when they talk about liberalized sex education for children, right here, and then they say that they're not about pedophilia right here, I feel like there's, like, they express the views that such liberalized sex education teaches youngsters how to obtain sexual gratification, which encourages sexual abuse of underage children. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's, um, there's a confliction right here. <laughs> Uh, structure of the universe, yeah, there's no creator, yeah, the universe, and they believe in the universe, and it's infinite space, and all the obscurities that they're never going to explain, and, yeah. Garden of Eden is a large laboratory, North Ark is a spaceship, with preserved DNA, Tower of Babel is a rocket, a great flood with a byproduct of a nuclear missile, which seems like they're just pulling their information from other sources for a lot of things, right? But, yeah, their goal is to inform as many people as possible about 
um, about the extraterrestrial race, and they want to create human life on other planets because they're so, you know, pure and great. Um, Wait, Rahel also mentioned cloning as a solution. Okay. They said expressed interest in cloning Hitler. For retroactive punishment. You guys have a swastika in your logo. I don't think it's for retroactive punishment. <laughs> Even there's a movie Iron Sky about Hitler still being alive and being immortal and all this shit. Man. The Third Temple or the Third Reich? Some freaking. on some uh, Nazi shit. Yeah, so they're trying to make the third temple and yeah, this is the stuff I want to get into. The, the embassy for extraterrestrials is the vision of the international real movement to establish an embassy at a base cost of 20 million and a, with a landing pad that would save, serve as a spaceport. This location would be neutral, preferably Jerusalem. You know why they just say fuck you to all the <laughs> all the Jews there. <laughs> Could be surrounded by acres of campgrounds supporting 144,000 people, hey? Or more than twice the estimated real membership of 2005. Um, so, in 1987, they put it at 1 million. They, their funding raised to 7 million. In 2001, they, they're at 9 million. Oh, look at that. 18 years ago, they already raised 20 million dollars. <laughs> like, this is why I say this shit is not fake. They raised 20 million dollars by 2001 when all this cloning shit happened. 20 million dollars. 18 years ago. I guess they don't have the embassy done. They have like a, they have a temporary version, so they don't have it like in different places, but they don't have like an actual, uh, the reason they don't have it done is because they want to be in Jerusalem, so. I'm talking about like a world government. And yeah, you, you get the point. You get the point. Branding, ra yeah, shout out this, this group. Branding aliens as promoters of fascism and racism. I, I bet they are. I bet they are fascists and racists. Like, who makes a swastika with the Star of David? Like, I understand, like... Well, actually, technically, I, you can almost say in Ethiopia we do, but they're not... It's a backward swastika, and they don't put them, like, in the same symbol. They don't mix them in one symbol. They're just both symbols that are existing there and existed before. Like, the whole Hitler thing. But at the end of the day, the way they have it is just so offensive, like pulling up to Israel with the, like, with the Jewish symbol, but having the Nazi symbol in the center of their symbol. Is just, regardless if they're the fake Jews and all that shit, like I don't really care about that right now, like they are, but like it just, they did go through getting murdered not long ago, and that's just wild to do that. Because <laughs> you can't accept, you can't expect people to have like, sympathy for you if you don't have sympathy for you know them getting murdered and stuff and all that but yeah so maybe I'll do another video on cloning and that's just separate from this but this was um, mainly about clone aid and just kind of showing you an example about how cloning um, whether you want to believe it or not is real and companies are showing you that they can do it. They put in a lot of movies and TV and you don't even want to believe that shit because it's movies and TV, I understand. But they put it like it's it's, it's right here. I just I just read you this few guys with TV. So you can you guys can look up realism and clone aid on your own and um on on YouTube, like on the internet, and you can like just actually research and like look through a lot of different stuff, look at their members. 
like the Richard, like the Bridger woman, like that he started there. He got to do further research and look into this, but yeah, Kid Boo claims he claims he, he 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 ran away from this cloning facility that was in Vancouver. Trippy as well, so I don't know. They, they they say that they're they say they're part of this. Um, they say they're clones. They they gave you a legitimate company that really clones people, and they might have put some you know stupid ass shit online. But like, what is this company? Is, or is it just or is it just a front for for offshore money? And that's where the twenty million came from. People are just storing like illegal money that they're laundering. They're basically just. But at the end of the day, you can clearly see that there's a bunch of people protesting and, like, you know, actually doing things for the movement. They're volunteering and they're doing stuff. So I really don't think it's a front. Like, it doesn't look like a front at all. Because, like, I don't know, you can hire people to do shit like that so you can put off the front. But that just seems too, like, get a laundry mat or something or a car wash. But doing this for a front just seems so, like... You don't want to draw attention when you have a front and you're, like, laundering things. So, like, when you do something that's going to draw the attention of government and people who are going to investigate you and you actually have state-of-the-art equipment and you have senators who donate $500,000 for your equipment and you have all this money donated to you and everything, it's not, it's not a front. That's just, like, the only possible thing I can think of that's out, you know, that's, yeah. So, it's honestly, kind of, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of interesting how they have that connected. It almost looks like it fits in there kind of perfectly, but it's just... I'm, j I'm just kind of at a loss for words. If you, like, the last half an hour, I've almost been at a loss for words reading some of this, because, like, I've read both of these pages before, obviously, but it's just... Some of this stuff is just... Even reading it twice is just... Sometimes you get at a loss for words. But, yeah, check out some of those movies. The Sixth Day, Ex Machina and other stuff I mentioned during there. I, I don't remember what else I mentioned specifically movie-wise, but... Oh, yeah, the movie Species. Because this definitely... This cloning stuff definitely has to do with some, like, some alien shit, too. Because clearly they're, they have stuff to do with all the aliens, but... Yeah, that... That was a... That was kind of a weird video, but either way, <laughs> I'm gonna end it there. I'm gonna do the spiritual warfare part three video. Uh, we'll see if I do it today. You'll, you'll just see if it's posted today. If you watch this today, and it's posted today, I did it today. If not, it's I didn't. I didn't get a chance to do it today. So we'll. we'll I'll, I'll see you in a minute. But yeah, with that, peace.